This is O2 Inside Line, this rose, episode 6, featuring myself, Maro Tojo. So this is Rugby World Cup training camp week four. This week is a little bit different. It's a three-day week. It's at the end of a tough, you know, few weeks training. Uh, the boys have uh, put some hard work in, and we're going into games as of next week. So I think the whole idea is a little bit of a deload week. The only deload aspect of that is the amount of days we're training. <laughs> there hasn't been any deload in terms of what we've been doing. It's been pretty tough, but um, yeah, so this week is a little bit different for those reasons. We came in on Sunday evening, we had a meeting, a whole squad, that's players and staff. And those meetings are typically Steve setting the tone, setting the goals and objectives for the week. After the meeting, we have dinner as a team again, so a squad and staff. And yeah, it's really just to connect, get on the same page and know what we have to do for the next week's training. <laughs> So Monday morning we typically start with a little bit of ball skills so each week the coaches try and mix it up. This week it was a little bit of basketball, um, I used to play basketball back in the day, they called me Mr 50 points at school but yeah it was basketball but it was really more like netball, um, the Dream League isn't a strong point for most of the squad here, amongst the forwards anyway. Scored in football? Do you get me scoring? Yeah, <laughs> I scored in football. <laughs> you know the best players in the world. You know even they miss penalties. Beckham. Miss penalties, you know, all the greats, Ronaldo, they all miss penalties, so I'm just in that same, you know, category. <laughs> Find your partner. We then had our first of two weight sessions of that day. The first one was an upper body pump, and it's just to you know get the get the blood flowing, get a little bit of a sweat on. Uh, we're in partners, so there's a bit of teamship that goes along with that, and yeah, it's just to get you know the body primed for what's coming next. You're so then after um, the gym, we went into the the 4G again just doing some contact work just working on some of our contact skills relatively low level in comparison to the stuff we do outside but again just practicing technique it then followed we went on to our line out workshop um, there, you know, Steve is a, as a player and as a coach, he's you know a great line out mind. So he was putting us through our paces there. The line out is all about relationships. It's about the relationship between the jumpers and the lifters. The relationship between the, the caller and the hooker, and the caller and the rest of the rest of the pack. So we're just working on that and trying to make sure at least we're all aligned in that endeavour. So then we got into the team session later on in the day. Here individually, work as a forward, you know, you don't, it doesn't really change too much what you're working on. Um, ball, carry, tackle, trying to you know, be in an effective position throughout the game. As a team, we also have a number of things we're working on. On Monday, we're working on several aspects of our game, our defence, a bit of our attack, a bit of, our, of, of the kicking game as well. So it was, you know, it was quite a holistic session. Go, 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 go,
Two. I'm sure most people watching this will know that I'm a second row, um, which means I'm in the second row of the scrum. Um, and I've been in numerous scrums throughout my career. My role as a second row, and I guess my role as part of the back five of the scrum is to hopefully be the energizer for these guys at the front. Hips, let's go Coley. Two. Coming in, boy. Right behind you, Bev. Let's get it, nice and loud. Jamie, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Jamie George, right behind you. Come on, Carson. Will Stewart, let's get it. Let's go. When your head is between you know the front row, it very much depends on you know which front row you have. Some of them have small hips, some of them have wide hips. The wide hips <laughs> can be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but you know you just have to adapt to what you have in front of you. <laughs> Whenever you go through something difficult or arduous as a team, it brings you closer together. It gives you a greater appreciation of your, your teammates, whether that's on the field, off the field. These walk bike sessions that we're doing is just another way of bringing the pack of forwards closer together, knowing that we're all mucking in and they're pretty tough, uh, you know, it's not easy. It's um, not the most pleasant of feelings, but it's definitely going to put us in good stead going forward. train pretty hard and we have some time off it tends to be in the evenings and it's just important that we do our best to recover because we know the next day we're gonna go pretty hard again um, and as I've gotten a little bit older um, I've, I've you know taken my recovery more and more seriously. Recovery is key to having longevity and also um, trying to have continuous high high level performances. Let's make his feet look really <laughs> there you go, massive. <laughs> Today was a little bit of a shorter day than normal. After our unit meetings, we were in the gym and we were going for one rep max on a couple of exercises. At the end of a four week block, we're going into a new set of programs and a new phase as of next week. So this is, I guess, a good way to see the gains that have been made in this period. Yes, yes, yes. 
We had a little bit more downtime in the afternoon and evening than we would normally have. A few things I like to do in my free time. Um, generally, I like to chill out, I like to recover, I like to catch up with friends. Um, I also have a number of off-field interests. I recently launched the Pell Fund, which is, I guess, my philanthropic foundation, which looks to provide academic scholarships for young Nigerian kids throughout their whole um, academic life. We have our first cohort of of children starting in September. We're starting with 40 kids in September. And yeah, we're, we're just looking to make a big impact on the lives of these, of these children. The type of kids that we are you know, catering for within the Pearl Fund is abject poverty, fatherless, and orphaned orphan children. So we're here at Platform Schools. This school is going to be one of the beneficiaries of the Pearl Fund. Um, it's here in Ipaja, Lagos. This is 15, potentially 20 years of support depending on their program. The plan is, you know, after a, a time has passed, we'll be able to look back and see the impact we've, we've made on, on the lives of these children. That is it for now. Um, the content guy has been disturbing me all day to do this. So yeah, we're here this late. I'm gonna chill and yeah, we've got a big day tomorrow. So we'll, we'll see what happens and yeah, see you later. Good morning guys, so today is Wednesday, it's uh, currently 7.30 in the morning and yeah, I'm about to go get some breakfast now. Do you have any black tape? Do you have any black tape? No, line up tape. Okay. Oh, that's the one. Come on, 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 come on,
Stay big, boys. Stay big, boys. Hey, they call that in the business money in the bank. Yes, Chief. Yeah. That's the start of it, eh? Yeah. That's the start of it. Big step forward again today. Well done, boys. Play off this iPad. I have got a video of it if anyone missed this one. It's a challenge when you're in this environment, when you're in this one, you don't play the level you guys operate at. He said, I'm going to ask you to switch off now. So switch off, relax, enjoy it, recover, that's your job. Come in on Sunday, energised and ready to go. Thank you for all your hard work so far. Go enjoy your break, fellas. Thank you very much. <laughs>